What's up everyone, it's your friendly neighborhood French Canadian and today I'll show you how to make Scarlet for Mortal Kombat. So Scarlet is a character in Mortal Kombat, she uses blood magic to fight. So obviously I thought the Thorn of Briars sorcery was going to be perfect for her. And I also thought about using like a, the Thorn Whip, but I already did a bleed build with that. So I figured we'd try something new. Now Scarlet in Mortal Kombat 11 and in past games has used a dagger as her main weapon. But she can also make blood weapons and she makes whips, she makes a scythe. However, those two weapons would kind of hinder us because they would need more points and dexterity and strength. And the Reduvia is actually perfect because it only needs 13 dexterity. And obviously arcane, but we're going to be using that as one of our main stats. Now, uh, to cast our sorceries, we'll be using uh, the Staff of the Guildy because it actually boosts the Thorn Sorceries, which we'll be using for this build, as well as it causes Blood Loss buildup. Now, the Briars of Sin is your close range spell we're going to use. This is the get the heck off of me spell. Sometimes you will get hit out of it, but if you're like halfway through the animation, you won't and you actually kill the enemies around you. And the second one, the Briars of Punishment, it travels extremely far, so you want to use that for long range combat. And it also does collateral damage, so it will travel through enemies uh, depending on who you're aiming at. So you have to aim at the furthest enemy you can and it will go through everyone else. Because if you're aiming at the enemy in front of you, you will hit them and stop there. But if you are aiming at the enemy that is farthest from the back, then it will go through everyone and cause damage to everyone in its path. Now both of these spells do take some time to a cast, that's why we're going to be using the Radagon icon as one of our talismans, but just keep that in mind when you're fighting. But that's why we're going to be using the Reduvia, because it's quick to hit, obviously it's a dagger, and it has one of the best ashes of war in the game, which is Bloodblade. Not only does it do a lot of damage, it does a lot of damage at a distance, and you can multicast it. It also causes blood loss buildup without you needing to be close to your enemy. You may think, oh, this is just another bleed build, it's only going to be arcane. But let me show you these stats, because it gets kind of complicated with how everything works. So basically, our two main stats will be Faith and Arcane. And it sounds weird because you're, we're actually using sorcery, right? So you would think we need intelligence, but we actually don't. Now I tested this with intelligence and arcane, and I tested only arcane and just enough faith and some intelligence, and I did only arcane and only faith. And what does the most damage with the incantations is what I have right now. So it's 55 faith and 50 arcane. So these are the soft caps uh, for these skills. I know it sounds weird, but the Reduvia obviously scales with Arcane. Our staff scales with Arcane as well. And our sorceries need faith. So it's a bit weird considering that it does magic damage, but you will actually get more damage using only faith and Arcane. And of course, the more Arcane you have, the more damage you do with Bloodblade, and the quicker the blood loss buildup is. Because I have some people who are commenting on my videos thinking that's not how it worked, and they didn't know uh, what arcane was doing really and it's fine like I know some people are like new to souls games But I just wanted to explain it to make sure that you guys understand why we're spending points into arcane So the stats at level 150 will look like this 41 vigor because I had an extra point I didn't know where to put uh, 30 mind now these spells don't use a lot of FP so you can definitely like go with 25 and then put another 5 in endurance It's really up to you because uh, casting a blood blade can take a lot of endurance Dexterity is at 14, but you need a 13 to be able to use the dagger intelligence. We're not touching it at all. And of course, 55 faith and 50 arcane. So overall, I think this build really does feel like you're playing Scarlet, like you're playing a blood mage. Now, there are some things we could have done. Uh, let's say we would have gone the faith route and used a seal to cast some blood incantations, but I've already done that before. And I really wanted to put those briar sorcery to use because I don't think I've seen a lot of people I use them in builds, and I knew that if there was a way, I was gonna make it work. So now that you know how this build works, and how to make it stat-wise, I'm going to show you where to get all the gear and the items that you need to make it. For the gear, uh, it was pretty hard because there's nothing that's kind of skimpy and red. The Noble's a Traveling Garb, the Traveler's Set, and the Crimson Hood. And I think it's alright. I mean, I wish it was a red version of this, but, you know, we gotta work with what we got, and that's what we got. 
Now for the weapons, there was obviously one choice for me with this because this build does need the two primary stats for damage and so the Reduvia is actually perfect. And to cast our Briar Sorceries, we'll be using the Staff of the Guilty. As I mentioned, it does boost Thorn Sorcery and it causes Blood Loss buildup as well. You can get the Reduvia super early on. You have to fight the Invader that will invade you if you go down in this lake. And you can get this super early, so around level 20 to 30, uh, you can definitely fight and beat him. Now to get the Staff of the Guilty, you have to farm it from the enemies that have it. And those are the Thorn of Fire Sorcerers. So you can find them in the mountaintops of the giants, in Limgrave, in the, the camps they have. So for example, there would be some in this area right here. There's also some in Fort Laid here, in Caled. And the biggest one in the mountaintops of the giants would be in the garrison, the guardian's garrison. So in this area right here, right next to the freezing lake side of Greece. To get our first sorcery, the Briars of Sin, you want to come to Limgrave again at the artist's shack. And the easiest way to get there, just cross on this uh, broken pillar or whatever. And you're going to see our friend there who's uh, got two slugs with him. That's the guy you want to kill and uh, the sorcery will drop. Next, to get the Briars of Punishment, you'll have to uh, get to the Mountain of the Giants. So it's pretty end game. However, it's really easy to find. Once you cross this bridge here, when you first get to the Mountain of the Giants and you want to cross that really long bridge, there's a big fire chongus person right here. You'll be able to loot the Brides of Punishment on a body that's right here to the left and there will be a few enemies, uh, a few thorn sorcerers, so you just want to make your way left and loot it off a body. So it's pretty easy to find. Now for the talismans, we'll be using the Radagon icon to shorten it, our spellcasting time. We'll be using the Flux canvas talisman to do more damage. Uh, we'll be using the Lord of Blood's exaltation of course, because whenever blood loss triggers, our attack power will raise whether it's enemies that bleed or us and we'll also be using the dagger talisman for critical hits you can definitely switch this one out if you don't like it if you want something else you can also use the rotten winged sword insignia if you want to do even more damage but i just wanted to use something different <laughs> for the radagon icon you want to come to uh, the academy take the debate parlor side of grace after defeating red wolf radagon and you want to take a right once you get out here and jump on top of this railing and once you do you'll see the ladder climb up there go in the window and you'll be able to loot the talisman off of a chest it's really easy to find now for the flock canvases talisman which i use a lot in builds uh, you can find this once you finish millicent's quest line to the very very end once you either choose to help her or uh, kill her defeating your sisters so what you do after is you go back to gary's shack in caled once you finish the quest line completely and you want to talk to him, exhaust his dialogue, then kill him, and he'll drop the talisman. Lord of Blood's Exaltation is in the capital, but in the underground area. So you want to take the uh, subterranean shutting grounds side of grace. And one of my bleed build videos, I do show exactly where to go. And I will link it for you guys, because in the two current games I have right now, I don't have uh, Lendl unlocked at all. So I can't show you. To get the dagger talisman, it's a bit of a trick. So I'll show you exactly where to go because it can be a bit confusing. And you also need some stone sword keys to open a fog wall. This is where you want to use the stone sword keys and instead of dropping like you usually do you want to drop uh, here on this platform and then make your way through here Go to the right again, and then you should be able to loot it from this body right here. 
that's all you need to make this build. I really hope you enjoy it. If you want more builds like this, there are plenty more on my channel. So have yourself a wonderful day, everyone, and I'll see you all very soon.